You're listening to A Taste for Travel here every Thursday morning on WSTU 1450. Travel Plus Vacations is our sponsor agency. Travel Plus is located at the corner of US 1 and Cove Road. You can get in touch with them at 283-7118 or go to their website, vacationdoctors.com. We, uh, we've, we've decided that we've, we've got a place here you can travel on a tank full, actually probably less than a tank full, get away for the day and have a nice little uh, getaway down to the Palm Beaches. And we have available today to talk to us is John Blades, who's with the Flagler Museum. And John's available to talk to us this morning about the property down there, maybe a little bit more of a, give some people an idea of what you can do at the Flagler Museum, which of course is better called Whitehall. Good morning, John. Good morning, David. Yeah, maybe you can kind of... Tell us a little bit more about maybe location and, and an idea of uh, maybe if someone's never been down to your area in the Palm Beaches, um, maybe they can kind of get, get a feel for uh, what the Flagler Museum has to offer down that way. Okay. Well, the Flagler Museum is located on the island of Palm Beach, um, which is directly due east, I should say, of, uh, of West Palm Beach. It's a National Historic Landmark. It's, it's on eight and a half acres uh, on the shores of Lake Worth, and um, it's open to the public. Um, year round, Tuesday through Sunday. Now, with the uh, with I guess the different events that you have down there, what are some of the things that someone would be looking into or maybe seeing? Uh, what what Flagler had put together, I guess, when he built um, the White Hall there back in was it the 1900s? Yes, actually, they started construction in 19, 1900 and completed it in 1902. And we opened uh, the White Hall as the Flagler Museum in 1960 to the public. And as I mentioned earlier, it's a National Historic Landmark. As a museum, our primary mission is uh, really twofold, to preserve this National Historic Landmark for future generations, and secondly, to use it as a means of educating people about this incredible time period in American history. Uh, so we have a, a huge range of uh, programs uh, in, that include a music series, a lecture series, uh, changing exhibits, uh, a cafe, a museum store. We work with the schools extensively, and uh, and of course, our uh, the, the primary exhibit we have is the building itself, which has been completely restored and looks just as it did in 1902. Wow. No, I know there's quite a few rooms down there. What can you tell us a little bit some of the uh, the accommodations and what they what he had to live in back in those days? Yeah. Well, actually, unlike his other homes, Henry Flagler built Whitehall um, as sort of a public part of a public obligation. He felt he had, and at, as did many other men of his station in society at that, that time in American history. And uh, in essence, it was built as Florida's first museum. Uh, and it's built to communicate big ideas about uh, what America had become and was becoming. Flagler and his contemporaries saw America as really the, the last stop or the most, uh, the final uh, stage in the evolution of of Western cultural history. 3,000 years of Western cultural history, they believed, culminated here in America with a free society, a democratic society, a capitalistic society, a new world where uh, we could really get it right. And they really thought America had a great destiny and had and was fulfilling it. And Whitehall was supposed to communicate those kinds of big ideas to people. Now, with some of the rooms that he... he uh, this was considered a home, though? This was his home when he built it? Or you were saying it was more for a museum? or how, Well, what was his you know, the word museum literally means a home for the works of the muses or a home for the muses themselves. Or as Andrew Carnegie said uh, in, the, in the 19th century in one of his essays, a, a home for all that's highest and best in literature and the arts. Oh. And that's really exactly what Whitehall is, what the word museum has come to mean in the late 20th century, a, a public building with... Uh, artwork on the walls, essentially. Right. But this is a this is a total environment. The, there, it's full of symbolism. The rooms and the rooms are very large. The whole first floor is uh, was designed to communicate um, a sense of what's best and highest in, in uh, literature and the arts. And so there are references to the muses and to the god Apollo and to all the the, the things that they're really connected with muses themselves. But that wouldn't necessarily mean anything to us in the 20th century or 21st century unless we work hard to understand the symbols that Flagler and his contemporaries knew well. So the whole first floor is made up of very large rooms. The the main uh, entry hall is uh, nearly 5,000 square feet. Um, the library, the music room, a, a ballroom that's almost 4,000 square feet, a dining room, 
and a drawing room make up the first floor. So th- those are all very much public spaces and have been since the day Whitehall was completed. The second floor is is, is uh, living accommodations, guest rooms and the master bedroom and, and that kind of thing, and is m- very different from the first floor because it, it was about being comfortable and, and uh, living, whereas the first floor is about communicating messages. Interesting. Now, uh, I guess back, back when he, uh, I, I, I'm not really sure the history of all that down there. I guess it's a way of being able to learn about Whitehall and Flagler um, and what his what he had to do with all this. What what are some of the... Um, I, I know there was there was some information I just read not too long ago about, I guess, Whitehall was actually sold after Flagler died back in 1913. Yes, it was, actually. Um, what happened was he passed away in 1913, and uh, his wife spent, uh, maybe visited a couple of times over the next five years, um, but uh, she passed away rather unexpectedly in, in 1917 and left the property to her niece. Her niece didn't feel like she could maintain the property, and eventually um, it was operated as a luxury hotel, and a, a huge addition was tacked on to the building, which is which is now gone. But uh, it, And it operated as a luxury hotel from the mid-1920s through the mid-1950s, so mm-hmm. for about 30 years. we uh, It was acquired then by uh, one of Flagler's great-granddaughters, and restored and uh, opened as a museum in 1960. Now, I know with, with some of the modern-day things that are going down, you mentioned something of the music series and lecture series. What, mm-hmm. what, what kind of events are those? Well, what we've tried to do, whether it's our museum store or our cafe or, or any other program we have here, like the music series or lecture series, is, is to use them as means to help our visitors understand more about the time period that this place represents, the time period we call America's Gilded Age. So... Our music series is a, a series of chamber music concerts, and our our um, uh, it, that's built around the idea that people could come in and, and enjoy chamber music in a true chamber music type environment, a small and intimate environment, but have but enjoy the very best of chamber music. So these days, if you want to see the very best chamber musicians play, you usually have to go into a fairly large auditorium that's anything but a chamber music kind of environment. Mm-hmm. We've got that here, and we're lucky enough to have great sponsors who help make. Of uh, that kind of experience possible and, uh, and accessible to people. Yeah. Our lecture series is about helping people understand the whole time period and what else was going on between the end of the Civil War and the crash, mar- the stock uh, market crash in 1929. And and likewise, even our the menu in our cafe is about educating our our visitors about the kinds of food uh, and ways it was enjoyed during the same time period. So we we try to integrate the whole experience for our visitors. And this was, uh, as you mentioned, the cafe. So the food is really set back in that time as well? Yes, what we actually do is serve tea. Uh, tea was phenomenally important in, throughout the world, but particularly in Europe and America up until the early 20th century. And um, we serve a blend of tea that, that is unique to us. It's called Whitehall Special Blend Tea that's actually uh, comprised of a blend of the two most popular teas in the late 19th century. And we have tea sandwiches and, and it, everything else that goes with the tea. Uh, and, I, and while I know that, that um, your male listeners might be thinking, why would I want to come have tea, it, it turns out that, that first of all, that these tea sandwiches, that they look harmless, but they're not. They're really calorie-packed. No, I don't think most people can even finish the meal they have here. We basically serve it as lunch. And it's a, it's a great environment in a, in a new building we built that it houses the rail car and has a terrific view of Lake Worth. So it's a terrific experience for our visitors, and they get to learn a little something about how important tea was at the time and and have a uh, a tea the way they might, the way they did here in Palm Beach uh, 100 years ago. Yeah, that's pretty interesting and and I know uh, the the hours what what's the schedules that you have like for instance is a cafe open a certain time while you're while you're visiting Whitehall or is there a certain schedules that yes, you have? Yes, the ca- the cafe is only open from um, from Thanksgiving from the Friday before Thanksgiving to the Saturday of of Easter weekend. That's our peak season here. And it's open from 11:30 to 2:30 each day. We're open every day of the week except Mondays. And uh, we encourage our uh, people who are interested in coming to have tea to uh, to make an advanced purchase because our food is prepared fresh daily and delivered from off-site. And we have, so we we order that food uh, depending on the number of orders or a number of uh, advanced purchases that we have for the cafe. Mm-hmm. And it's become quite a popular part of the museum experience. Yeah, I know that's uh, that's pretty interesting. In fact, I, the travel agency Travel Plus, our sponsor for the show, 
um, has actually created a couple of different packages to come down and be able to see the museum and also include uh, high tea there uh, in the afternoon after uh, after they do their uh, oh, tour. Great. There. Yeah, that was one of the things they had talked about. So if anybody is interested in maybe learning a little bit more about some of these packages, uh, maybe be able to take uh, one of the motor coaches that leave here from the Treasure Coast and go down, or do it on your own. Um, two different ways of being able to visit that area, the White Hall in Palm Beach. Um, call over at the travel agency at 283-7118 for some of our group departures. But now, I, I guess, that John, now you have a website you can go to to find out about the music series and the lecture series? Yes, and about the exhibits and all the other programs. Right. It's, uh, it's an easy one to remember. It's flaglermuseum.us. Okay. Well, that's some...